Boker Tov, everyone. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us for this special shear as we continue to plow through the Pirkei Avot, the ethics of our fathers. And today we're going to have the final class for the uh, first Mishnah of chapter one of Pirkei Avot. Thank you very much to Mordechai and Raya for hosting this shear. And I want to invite everybody to join us, Bezrat Hashem, tonight for the first shiur in person. And it will also hopefully be online just on Zoom. Looking forward to seeing all of you as we start a new chorus, Tuesday, Tuesday Tanya, uh, which will be learning the letters of the Alter Rebbe. Uh, if you have your own Tanya, you're welcome to bring it. The portion is called Igeret HaKodesh. And uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, at Chabad of 52 King George Street. I also want to remind everybody that Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, we're going to be starting to write the new Torah in honor of protection of Am Yisrael right over here in Rechavia, Yerushalayim, and Eretz Yisrael. And uh, please spread the word. We're looking forward to seeing everybody. Hopefully today uh, we'll be sending out the first email informing everybody about the special event. Yesterday, we started to talk about the three messages that the Anshe Knesset Hagdola taught us, the men, of the, great, the men of the Great Assembly. They taught us, first of all, that a person should be deliberate in judgment. And you should have a lot, many students. And one should make a, a, a fence a protection for, for the Torah. In other words, that a person should not come even close to, to come to do a, a sin. So first of all, the, the, in, in today's class, we're going to try to talk about two points. Number one, what does mitunim mean? Mitunim means deliberate. We should be deliberate. And, number, and the second part of the class will be um, translating these three concepts, how we can learn from that to our daily lives, especially as it comes to um, educating and running a Jewish home. So first of all, when, we, when it comes to mitinut, that a person should be deliberate. If this is the first message that the Mishnah is teaching us, there must be something very special in, in, the, in, this, in this concept. Um, so basically, when we talk about uh, passing down the Torah from generation to generation, from Moshe uh, down to today's generation, it turns out that to be deliberate and do something slowly is very, very crucial for the thing to be, to be carried out properly. In fact, uh, it says that when Am Yisrael left Mitzrayim, we ran away from Mitzrayim because the, uh, it's not only literally that Paro and his army chased after us, but it was also a spiritual concept that uh, the, the evil was so strong, we were almost up to the 50th level of, of evil, of, of, uh, of, of evil, and then it, it would have been almost too late, God forbid, to separate ourselves from the evil. Excuse me, please. And so we had to run away. But when, it's, when Mashiach comes, it says, keep... Um, that we're not going to be running out of the, the galut, out of the exile. We're going to go deliberately. Because when we do something deliberately, then it's done properly. So the first message is that before you actually do something, we need to make sure that it's calculated and it's, it's done. Uh, the thought process has, has uh, been maximized to, to its... To, to, to its uh, to the extreme. In other words, it says in our sages teach us that one of that one of our uh, I think it was Rabbi Eliezer that every time before he opened his mouth to say anything, he would think thirteen times whether or not whatever is going to come out of his mouth if if, if it's worthwhile to say it, because very often. A person regrets afterwards what they said. And it's a chaval. Because if a person would, would think beforehand what they're doing, then, then most probably we would uh, save ourselves uh, many headaches if we would be more deliberate, not only in our learning and when we 
um, we, when we give someone, um, when when we teach, when we teach, but also just in how we speak and how we act. That's before you do the action. Then during the action, there also needs to be um, a mitinut, which is being deliberate. When the Rebbe Rashab um, needed to travel to a certain place, a half hour before the travel, he was very calm. You could not tell that he was going to, he was going to, uh, to go on a trip. And it's not because it's not because he wasn't excited or busy um, to prepare for his trip, but it's because he didn't want to allow that whatever he was going to do in his uh, in his uh, trip should re- re- should disturb him from what he was doing now. Every moment you, you you focus on what you're doing for that specific time, and then and then naturally. Um, uh, we, we can be successful. It's like the Rebbe once quoted about the Rashba. He was a great Rishon around the time of, the, of Rashi, I believe even, even before Rashi. And so it's known that the Rashba was, had many, many, many uh, uh, jobs. He was uh, a rabbi, would answer sh- uh, questions. He was also Rosh Hashiva. He also was a doctor. And he also had time to go for a half hour on a walk every day. And so the question the Rebbe asks, how did he have time to do that? He was such a busy person. And the Rebbe says, because whatever he did, he did totally. He put himself into it 100%. And when you put yourself one in, into everything 100%, you could do it more calmly. And we accomplish more things when we act um, in, in a very calm and, uh, and deliberate way. Now, what is a little... Um, Okay, now I'd like to move over to the, to the second part of this lesson, which is how we translate these three concepts of, um, how we translate these three concepts of, of Havu Metunim Badin, Ve'amidu Talmidim Harbe, Va'asus Yagla Torah, that we should be deliberate in judgment, what the Mishnah says, and have many students, and, um, and, and we should have a fence for the Torah. How can we translate this into, um, into running a Jewish home. And so I want to start with what the what it says that there was a story of a king that he told his people of his kingdom that on a certain day he's they're going to be able to go and, and all of the treasures are going to be open and anybody that wants can take whatever they want any precious stones any uh, any uh, uh, gems and jewels. So everyone was excited and they started preparing uh, uh, bags and boxes to collect all of the treasures. And at the right time, on the right day, um, the, the, the palace was open. Everyone barged in and there was beautiful music and dancers. And, um, and uh, everybody said, you know what, there's a long day ahead. So let's enjoy all of the, the, uh, the ambiance. And the second room was filled with great food and, and, and catered um, uh, food of the top, of the, on the top level. And most people, the entire day, they got lost. They got busy with all these side issues. At the end of the day, all of the treasures were locked. And people felt bad. The majority of the people felt bad that they, they did not even get to the to, to, to the treasures. This mashal, this parable, is supposed to um, uh, open our minds and hearts to, to our purpose in this world. Very, you know, Hashem creates in, in, in the uh, in the world all kinds of uh, uh, all, all kinds of uh, pleasures, um, materialistic pleasures, and very often it takes a person's mind off what's most important in, in the world. So therefore, we need to, um, to focus and to make sure that we do the proper thing. And this is the, the, um, the, the, the purpose, this is the goal of um, both parents, the husband and the wife, to make sure that the children are, are, are educated in the proper way. But most importantly, the wife, because the woman is considered a keratabayit, the main, per, the main one in the home. 
Um, the father is usually out to work and, and uh, dealing with all kinds of important things. But when it comes to actually dealing with the education of the children, so it's the woman, it's the mother who, who, who's, who, di- who gives tender care, like it says in the verse in Mishlei, Shema b'ni Musar avicha, listen my son, the, 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 the Musar of, of your father, and do not leave the Torah of your mother, that it's the, the, uh, it's, it's the, the woman that educates the child mainly, and uh, so the, 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 the position of educating the child is mainly on, on the woman. So it's her, um, it's her uh, challenge and, and uh, tafkid and position to be able to, um, to educate and, and to wash the hands of the children and to say brachas with them and teach them how to daven and teach them how to learn, as we'll see later on in the second chapter, Bezrat Hashem, that the mother of Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananiah, she actually gave birth to him in the yeshiva and in Thai, his entire life, he was in the yeshiva. He never left the yeshiva. So he, 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 that's why the Mishnah says, Ashrei Dato, the praiseworthy is the one who gave birth to him because she wanted him to, uh, to be in an atmosphere of learning Torah the entire time. So let's start with point number one. Havum tunim badin. You should be deliberate. Who is the one who is most deliberate? Uh, like the Ramban says, Nachmanides, Titnehek tamid ledaber, you should always get used to speaking your words pleasantly to every person and every time. And that's usually how the mother, how the wife talks softly. And that is the best way to educate a child. That's, that's what we learn from Havu Metunim Badin. This is called being deliberate. Very often, more, more often than not, we we get upset um, and short, uh, short-tempered at a child. And it turns out that it wasn't really that much what the child did. It was more an expression of, of the, 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 the difficult day at work that we had. And the unfortunate child uh, it, it has to receive this, this, uh, um, this, this tension. There's no reason for that. The best way is to step back, and and the men can learn from the women that to have a soft, uh, a softer tone, to speak, to speak uh, softer, um, will will we'll never regret speaking softer, and very often we will regret to be more uh, short, short tempered, and that is the havum to badin, to be calm. Point number two is talmidim harbe. We need to have many students. How can we translate that? When we talk about um, uh, building a home, building a family, and having uh, building Yiddishkeit in a strong, safe environment, uh, so this the, the the message over here is that we talked yesterday about the importance of having many students, even in quantity. It's important that we that that. Not only is it quality that's, that's important, but also quantity. Today, we want to borrow from that message um, to the concept of having a large family and many children. Yes, and sometimes people view having many children as something which can, which can uh, um, interfere into the... Uh, in, into the um, financial situation of the family. The truth is that every child is an entire world. Every child is a, is, is a blessing. And we see clearly that as every child uh, is born, um, there is a tremendous blessing which, which, uh, which can come from that. I could tell you a personal story by us. It was absolutely an amazing story. Um, I think this is the first time that I'm even talking about it. But uh, when our third child, Schneer, was born, we, we were lived in our first post in New City, upstate New York, in Rockland County. And um, we lived in a small, unbelievable, tiny home. It was a very, very ancient home on the property of where the Chabad house was, was, uh, was, was built. The Chabad house had been built some um, 20 years beforehand. And this small house, which had a well outside, just gorgeous, unbelievable. 
in the rural uh, Rockland County. And so we lived in this tiny home, literally trying to guess. It was two tiny rooms on the main floor. And upstairs there were two half rooms because the roof was, it was so slanted that it cut the room almost into half. It was truly amazing. Um, and when, so we had uh, two, two bedrooms upstairs. And then when our, when our third baby was born, it was literally nowhere to put him. But, you know, uh, you trust in Hashem. And two days after, the, after Schneer was born, even before the bris, somebody from the shul comes into my office and says, Rabbi, you need a bigger home. Look for a home, and uh, I'm going to buy you a home. So, uh, Baruch Hashem, that was like a pure, a pure miracle from Hashem. Um, there was another person, a woman, uh, an amazing woman in the community that was, uh, she still is, uh, a, a realtor. She found us a place within a very short amount of time, a couple of weeks. Baruch Hashem, we were, um, the, this, this real tzaddik, a real, real, uh, real amazing, amazing individual. He bought the home for us. Um, obviously, it's, it's until today, it's, it's still his home. But I was, I, I can't explain to you. Uh, how, how much I was uh, uh, overwhelmed by the tremendous, tremendous uh, kindness and friendship that this person had. Um, just, just something outstanding. And um, it's just a personal story. Um, the truth is that with, with all of our children, Baruch Hashem, we've had a tremendous bracha um, after every child that was born, we had a, something special, something really unique that we had, Baruch Hashem. That's something which is a, a, a physical bracha, materialistic bracha. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's so true. It's so true. The Rebbe talks about this many times that we should, we should try to have as many children as possible. Children bring bracha to the family. Children bring bracha to the community. And I always say that in our shul, children, um, the, uh, the, 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 the sound of children playing, even crying, is a background, uh, musical background to our shul. Even in halacha, um, it says that if you have children that are too young and they might disturb the davening, don't bring them to shul. And, and uh, I, I understand why in some shuls they're like that. Of course, that parents should should be with their children. They shouldn't be running around. I, I'm I'm not suggesting that it's a good thing to let the children run around. But to have a child, the sound of, of laughing and singing and even a little bit crying is is not such a bad thing. When Mashiach will come, when all of the neshamot that are supposed to come down and be born into this world will be finished, will be will will be empty up 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 high and be come down to this world. So that's another great reason to bring as many neshamot as possible down to this world. And that can bring uh, Mashiach even 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 quicker. I just want to add that um, that uh, <clears throat> that uh, this is something which which is bezrat uh, Hashem. All of the neshamot that come down uh, um, that come down to the world can only be a special bracha that we should that we should be able to stay here in bodies and be able to continue right into the era of Mashiach without having to have a, uh, any kind of interruption in the middle. So let's go on to the, th the third and final point, that it's important to, to make boundaries for ourselves. God forbid not to, get, not to be caught up in, 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 um, in a um, prohibition, God forbid. When it comes to educating children, it's really important to, to put uh, guidelines. You know, when you have a class uh, of, of children, even any class of, of uh, adults, but obviously adults are more mature. So by children, children um, at the beginning of the year is the best time to lay down the rules. Once you've put down the foundation, then pretty much um, the uh, throughout the rest of the year, um, there will be order in the class and order in the court. And moreover, children admire when the teacher puts rules for how they should and should not act. So whether it's raising their hand, not talking, um, or sitting in a certain way, or sometimes moving, moving seats, changing seats, 
whatever it is, making sure that the kids know clearly that there is someone in charge, children like that. Now, sometimes if you ask a child um, if they like the, ch- the, the teacher who lets them run around or the teacher who makes more, who makes um, uh, uh, order in the class, they'll tell you probably the teacher lets them run around. But years later, or even one year afterwards, they themselves will tell you that we appreciated more the teacher who kept us in line. And that's because giving, giving guidelines and rules is not a negative thing. It seems to be as if it's gevura, as if it's too stern, too severe. But really, if the purpose is in order to, to make a nice atmosphere and a nice um, experience, whether it's in a class or it's children at home, then as long as it's not too much gevura, too much severity, then we, we're pretty much sure that va'asu siyag, to make this fence, that can only be um, a benefit for, for the children. Today, more than ever, it's so important to, to put boundaries because n- uh, now that there's uh, um, technology and social media, uh, unfortunately, there are some adults who very freely lend their their uh, their phones or iPads to children? Even adults need to have uh, boundaries, and and no one can say that 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 they don't need to have that, that they don't need protection. But especially when it comes to children, a child is like a tree. We are forming, we are guiding the, the tree that the tree should grow grow straight. The, the straighter the, the tree grows when when it's young, the straighter it will and the taller will grow. When it, when it when it uh, when it gets older, this whole concept is very much connected to Sfirat Omer because we have the week of Chesed, kindness, the week of Tiferet, um, and the week of Gevura. So Gevura is is being stern and being being strict. Sometimes the best way to bring out your your uh, um, stern uh, and and uh, and um, organization is through uh, is through Chesed. In other words, blending. Uh, the chesed and the gvura, that's really what teferet is, that gvura is not a terrible thing as long as it's done with the, with the goal, with the purpose of, of, uh, of bringing a person closer, then the gvura being, being stern can be a positive thing. Thank you very much for joining us. I really hope that you'll join us tonight in person or online. It's perfectly okay. It will be only on Zoom, Bezrat Hashem. And as we become... Uh, more into the uh, meeting in person, Bezrat Hashem, that will bring more Ahavat Israel and building up our community in the most beautiful way. Thank you very much. Have a great day.